Let me tell you of a place, my son, that flows into the rise of the sun, a river that runs through me and you. As you grow to tell the tale of the mighty she and the people there that love the place that I call home. Give her, you're on the river. Give her, you're on the river. The staff of Money Mayor Machine and Give Around the River would like to thank the following sponsors. I am Mayor Machine and the city of Mayor Machine. Thank you very much, guys. Hi, Mayor Machine. Welcome to another episode of Give Around the River. Today we're at beautiful French Fair Court of Brooklyn and I are going to take the uh, world-renowned Headless Nun Tour. And we're going to learn a little bit about the history of French Fair Cove. We're also, also going to learn about the history uh, of how Sister Marie lost her head. Are you excited, bro? I'm excited. Let's do it. I'm kind of scared, but we're going to get through it. Let's give her. Give her. Going up. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Jamie. Tonight we're going to journey back to a time of tales and myths. And I'll do my best to answer your questions. Some of the stories that you hear might seem outlandish, absurd, fantastical even. But remember that history's full of half-truths and whole lies. And who's to know what really happened? Are the tales that you hear just stories or myths? Are the unremembered truths too painful to recollect? I'll leave it to you to decide. And finally, I have to tell you how impressed I am that you've come out to dare the dark of the French Fort Cove and the possibility of sighting the headless nun. And with that, let us journey into the dark abyss. We're here with Fiona on the Headless Nun Tour. It's about to start. Come on. And it was made a fort in 1756 when French Canadian commander Charles de Champ de Bois Hubert brought the Acadians here. Her efforts to be a service would be costly indeed. We just heard from a priest that uh, was describing the yes, conditions of the fort here back in the 1750s and the plight that the people were in. And uh, now we're off to learn more about Sister Marie. Because after we go in here, there's no turning back. Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I guess we'll have to go, boys. We don't want to seem like, like scared little critters. No, we don't. Those and a lot of other valuables of the Acadian people were put into Sister Marie's care. Well, it would be a burden that was much too great for the young nun to bear. Why do you keep telling them I'm some kind of monster? Look at their faces! Look at their eyes! See how they hate me! The stories of Sister Marie's bravery, bravery carried on. And the cove became known as a haunted place where it was said that the spirit of Sister Marie roamed around, still guarding the treasure and searching for her head. Boy, <laughs> oh, who are you? We're just oh. innocent people wandering through the cove. Oh, God have mercy on you. Well, bless you, man. I hope you find the help that you need. Who's here? To dismantle the defenses of French Fort Cove, lest they be used against the British again. Well, they disappeared, and I, everybody thought that they had deserted, or that they'd been killed. He seemed to be a very destitute man. Well, he's very destitute. He's been lost and wandering about, half insane. I admit it. I buried a treasure here years ago. They lost their money, but I was smart. I came back here tonight looking for it. But instead, I found something different. The blood. And oh, he ran from her, and he ran all the way home, but she followed him, demanding that he help her find her head. Well, he crawled into bed, but every night he haunted, she haunted his dreams, saying, help me find my head. The man had to leave the area altogether. We might not be safe even if we do get out. He seemed like he was very upset. He's a very upset man. I don't know what you call a smart man, but as far as I know, once your head has left your body, you're done. You don't go around late at night, asking for it back again. But you know, you never know what's going to happen if somebody takes off your head. People die tragic deaths, strange, strange things happen to their soul. Well, I think he's just yelling out for us to stay away from him. Is he gone mad? Oh no, I don't think he's gone mad. But I think he's cursed. Oh, I fear, I fear it's a grave. It's a grave thing. Oh. Well, I can't touch you. Help. You were touching the treasure. Help. Well, you're dying uh, for sure. Oh, dear. Oh, that he had, had a narrow escape from the headless nun. 
I wouldn't be in here taunting her. <clears throat> the only thing that they found after he left was a blackened hoof print. A oh, hoof print? A hoof print. There were no footprints. The man had hoofs, and they found the ace of spades. Well, the men claimed that they were playing cards with the devil himself. Dear Lord. It's mine! It's all mine! You can't have it! I tell you, I don't want to carry on that anymore. Holy cow, it's her. Oh, yeah. Look, don't touch that. Don't go near to that. Frank! Oh my god. You guys, this guy lay in here. This man lies his unliving testament as to why we don't mess with the headless nun. I wish I could get an interview, but unfortunately it's possible. Rest in peace, big guy. Make it okay. Well, Fiona, I want to thank you very much for taking us on the uh, the uh, tour around French Fur Cove and uh, giving us lots of information. Sister Marie and the history of the area, and I want to thank you very much. Well, you're very welcome. Now, uh, just be careful of your dreams tonight and guard them. Say your prayers before you go to sleep. And you, I think you'll be all right. But thank you for coming and for daring the darkness of Frenchford Cove. Thank you very much, Fiona. You're very welcome. Can, can you tell us more about the uh, the, the uh, tour times that, that you uh, well, have now, every week? Certainly. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night. It starts at 9 o'clock. Thank you for having us. In the, I must say, uh, I think I dropped my wallet back there somewhere, so I have to go back and look for it. Well, that'll be a dangerous thing. I hope that the nun didn't get it. She'll put it in her treasure box. Did you want? Did you need a light? Can I borrow your light? Yeah, you can borrow my light. You, right. you really dropped your wallet back there. I did. Oh dear. Well, you better go look for it. Where would you find it? Are you not scared to go back in there all by yourself? I am very scared. Well, I hope that somebody goes with you. I wouldn't go back in there tonight. I'll bring she's, Frank with she's me. out wandering around. I'd be careful if I were you. Give her, Giver, you're on, on the, the river. river. The wallet's here somewhere. Around here somewhere? Well, I had it here, uh, I remember being in my back pocket. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Leave me alone! <laughs> Frank! Frank, fuck, what was that, man? This guy. Who's that guy? That's hey. that, uh... Who is it? That's that mad trapper? That's that mad trapper guy. From the tour. You got him. I kicked his ass. Let's get, let's get your wallet and get the hell out of here. my wallet and get the hell out of here. Come on. I don't know who the hell that guy was. He's a mad trapper guy from, uh, from the tour. I thought he was part of the, uh, part of the scenery, but... Uh, he's real, man. He's, he's, he's mad. Let's get, find my wallet. I'm gonna get the hell out of here. Come on. Find your wallet? No, I didn't find my wallet. I'm hearing all kinds of voices. What the? Never mind that wallet, man. We'll come back and get it tomorrow. This is getting crazy. Uh, this is Chopper uh, signing off once again. Uh, hopefully, we can. We can uh, find my wallet and uh, I know one thing, I'm not coming back here again in the dark.